I don't even know if I can call it that. Can I call it dating? How many dates have I been on and got it? Let's be real. Or, or do I call it failed talking stages? Hey guys! Welcome back to Sim and Kaylee. It's Sim. It's very, very late at night. Well, it's not that bad. Actually, it's almost 1 a.m. This is also low key the best time to make a video because if my mind isn't going crazy at this time of night, it's a rarity. So, as you can tell by the title, this video is going to be about what I learned while dating in college. My hair is also um, in the trenches. I need to do something different with it but I just graduated actually it's so crazy I just graduated from Howard this past weekend and I just honestly don't know where the time went yeah it's been a while but about to get real I have chill puffs mm -hmm. I just found real spots to get honestly Kayla and I were supposed to do this video together yeah but it was a busy, hectic, crazy year. A lot of things that we said we were gonna do as far as the Sim and K way just didn't happen because we were trying to hold on to our lives. It would have been a hilarious video because we've been through so many different stages with each other as far as like heartbreaks and crushes and then relationships and then talking stages and then breakups and things like that. So it would have been hilarious. Nevertheless, it's still gonna be a good video. So let's let's run it. I'm gonna look down at my phone for my notes. Basically, it's like what I learned and what I would tell either my younger self or if I had a younger sibling, a younger sibling beside my brother. This is what I would say. So it's like a combination of advice and then just cold hard truths. Like some stuff just sucks. Like you gotta be real about it and. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it. So the first one, honestly, is coming in kind of hot because I feel like I need to set the set the grounds. Like, one, don't play yourself. It sounds so basic, so simple, so obvious. Don't play yourself. Beyonce said it. Many great people have said it before. But let's let's really unpack it. First of all, you need to know what your attachment style is, which is kind of difficult honestly because a lot of people don't even know what attachment styles are but it's just really important to know what makes you connect to people and why you connect to certain people you need to know what you want and what you don't want and what works for you and what absolutely does not because you never want to get into a situation where and it don't happen because it's just life but you don't want to get into a situation where you know that it's not gonna end well and you know that it's not gonna work for you and what you like and what you need from somebody and you do it anyways. I've done it a billion times. And, and it never like feels good in the end because it's like, I kind of knew better. I hoped it would go the other way or I tried to act like I would be okay with a situation that I wouldn't be okay with and that's where you played yourself. That's where I played myself because it's like, you know yourself better than anyone else and if you haven't you will after these four years in college if you might get played by others but a lot of times situations be you playing yourself because you know usually you can tell what type of person or what type of time somebody's on pretty early on pretty early on and it's your decision from that point on to make if you're going to entertain certain things me personally it's an emotional thing like if we are having a lot of intimate moments not even sexual just a lot of cuddling time a lot of text not texting i'm sorry deep conversations i'm spending hours or days or whatever at, at your place in your room multiple if i'm seeing you multiple times a week like there are just things that are happening that make you want to that just open you up to people like if you're spending that much time with somebody unless you guys are literally just being physical 
and that's clipped and then you leave after the emotional attachment is definitely gonna form because there are such vulnerable moments happening and it's just like for me that is a love that a lot of times what happens is it'll be like an emotional attachment to somebody that is not really doing what they should be doing so it's like for me and people who are like me you're romanticizing you're adding so much fluff because like you're having these great moments like we have great conversations and we watch movies together and we eat together and da 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 and da da da, -da. and you, before you know it you're adding all these other things to it or like making it deeper or grander I won't say deeper because sometimes you do get deep and sometimes and that's like the problem but you're making it grander than it is because of that emotional attachment now in some cases it is grand but in my experience it, it really don't be <laughs> it don't be that grand a lot of stuff be bare minimum type things but because you've been in this space like you kind of romanticize a lot of stuff which leads me to my next point why this becomes so easy like and why it happens so often is please understand that link ups are not dates Oh my god, I didn't even know what a link up was before I got to college, but it's so normal because we do everything in our dorms slash apartments. For that to become like a space where hanging out with guys is cool. But let me tell you something, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. If you do want to be taken on dates, if you're a date girl, you want to be taken out consistent, like you want to be dated, not stuck in, stuck in this extended talking stage. Oh my god, if I could... If I could go back to baby Sim, I would say, <laughs> please, please, you are not asking for too much to go on a date. Baby, it could be a date to the freaking National Mall. Free. You can get in the metro. Buy me some ice cream from the truck. That's something outside the dorms because I promise you, nine times out of ten, once you start off in the dorm, the first thing up in the dorm, that's the culture of you guys' relationship. Because then after, like, before you know it, going back to my first point, you're having these intimate moments, not even necessarily physical. And it's comfortable. And then that's the standard. So then when you talk about dates, you're like, oh yeah, they might bring up dates, yeah, yeah, cool. But they're like, why would I take you out on a date? We have so much fun here. And then you end up in the extended, horrid talking stage that just groans on and on and on and on and you're like you look up and you've been in that for three months or the entire first half of your sophomore year i i digress that's something that i thought i mastered after my sophomore year but because even going into this year as a senior thinking i'm mm, i did you know i learned some lessons then but I didn't necessarily separate the two. Like there's something that you're constantly, constantly learning. So when I approached senior year, I was like, hey, I'm not doing this anymore. This guy's gonna do this for me. I'm not doing this, this, that, and the third. And I didn't do those things, but I did other things. And I'm like, you kind of ended up in the same area. You kind of played yourself. It wasn't 100% true to you. I'm the type of person, honestly, I want to go on dates. I want, it's very difficult for me to do more than one person at one time especially when i really am feeling somebody in the initial stages that make sense you know you're getting to know people you date them you narrow it down but i feel like after a few at least a month even three weeks i feel like you know if you're talking to multiple people like let's say two or three which one you like more and at that point i feel like that's when you need to decide to talk to one person that's just how i feel so when somebody <sighs> It's very hard for me, especially, like I said, when you're having these moments with people, it's like, you're having these moments with me, and you're having these moments with her, and you're having these moments with her. Like, come on, like, there is no way that all of this is genuine, because how are you putting that much energy and taking that much energy back with three different people? It's it's kind of mind-blowing, and I don't like it, and I try to be that girl. I try to be that girl. I try to be that nonchalant girl, like... You know, whatever. I talk to these. Yeah, you do that for about a week, and then you like one, and then you pick one over the other. And that's just kind of how I am. Like, and if that's what you learn about yourself, take it and hold on to that. You don't have to alter that to be somebody that you're not because you like somebody, and that's what they're doing. The right person 
is going to fit with you. Girl, I don't want to get off on a tangent. So yeah, if you want to go on dates, you need to demand that. Because before you know it, you'll look up and you have never been on a date. And it's just like, how? How did we get here? There are so many guys that may have asked you out and you were like, nah. You said no to that, to instead. So I've been watching Netflix for hours. And don't get me wrong, that stuff is cool. But I feel like it's a time and a place. Like initially, no. Because there's so many things that you learn when you're outside of that space because a room is already intimate like it already sets a, a like a level of intimacy that is implied that you don't necessarily need or want especially when you're just getting some money and the next one says don't be discouraged by guys not meeting your standards most of them are very emotionally immature and emotionally unavailable anyways yeah so pretty self-explanatory Sometimes it can be very frustrating dealing with like clown after clown after clown. I kind of want to say that they're not all clowns. But I, I can't say that. I can't say that. Um, a lot of them give clown town. A lot of them give circus charged up clowns. You know, you know. A lot of guys are not bad people. They just can't give you what you want or you guys aren't looking for the same thing. And a lot of times somebody could be very close to the mark, like so many great things, but they're just not emotionally available. You're never going to get anywhere with anybody that's, that's not emotionally available because they don't have anything to give you emotionally because they can't even grasp their own emotions. The lack of maturity is a problem a lot of times across the board, but I don't think you should get discouraged by that because the right experience will come along that doesn't mean that you're going to end up with certain people but i feel like every experience happens for a reason no matter how painful it can sometimes get or pointless it can seem if there's something to be learned which there always is then it means meaningful sometimes you have to like just be by yourself for real you don't have to constantly entertain clowns or just people that are just emotionally immature. Some people just like it's draining and it's frustrating. So sometimes you just have to have a purposely dry phone. And it's not because you don't have those pulls, I'll say, or you don't have the ability to have guys all up in your phone or girls all up in your phone. You just are choosing to protect your energy and your peace. And I did that for a while. And it's easy to slip out of that because it can be boring. Like everybody wants companionship attention whatever 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 but you just have to be real with yourself once you open yourself up to that especially if it's somebody that you know is not what you're looking for and you sometimes with the friend zone guys like you're a cool person and we could have something but you're not there yet for me but it's hard when you're attracted to your friend but that's an idea that's a concept i've done it before Code names may be necessary in college because it's likely that who you're talking to, they might be talking about some talking to someone else, or you just don't want no want people to know your business for real. I I think I, I like to call myself the queen of code names. I have a code name for everyone, even if it's somebody that I'm not talking to. You just don't people, especially at a school as small as Howard, know everyone and like your business like will just be out there so if you're been talking in the cab like especially if the guy's in the cab and you know he's talking to somebody else and da, 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 you can throw some code names out there just for your sanity your protection your peace of mind and it's fun like usually the code names i pick the variety of things one time my code name was um based on the person's state Cause I feel like that was a big part of his culture, <laughs> his personality. We got that. I've done it based on positions, like what position they played. But beyond that, it was like a double-edged sword. Like it was the position they played, but it also stand for something else, like their physical appearance. So it just really lined up. 
initials dot letter dot letter dot i've done it based on how they acted what for example one person i don't think i made this up did i no i didn't make that up so i'm not gonna use it but it can be anything just something that's not obvious like if somebody's from like um i'm trying not to say something <laughs> you if somebody's name is jason you don't want to go like jace that's absolutely stupid now if jason is a baseball player at your school you would call him yankee mm, i'm i'm good i feel like you call him yankee because people are not gonna be like they might think that they're not gonna know what you're talking about fl is when i use the guy was from florida and i his contact name was fl with a palm tree people aren't gonna really know if you go fl so those are weak ones i have some really good ones that i just am not gonna share but because they're still active actually ah uh, um yeah this one's this one's a hard one for us romanticizers fantasizers whatever um what they said is what they meant don't try and romanticize somebody's words or go based on how they treat you and then ignore treat you sometimes and then ignore how they treat you other times and ignore their words at this point in life like we're in college if he says one thing and then turns around and says he means and he meant something completely different he needs to go back to like first grade because that's not how communication works and and it's just as simple as you gotta take people's word for their word because your feelings once again will be hurt when you're like okay well he said that he didn't want a relationship and i agreed to that that was in october that was cool but ever since october we spent countless times together we hang out we study together he's really opened up to me this that and the third if he hasn't said actually you changed my life sally and now i'm considering a relationship with you let's go out let's be in love and it is now december and now you have this emotional attachment let's circle it back because everything ties into each other you will be sick mm, six to your stomach when you think that because how he treats you sometimes or what you see is different from what they initially said if they said it then they meant it and you can ask along the way I'm, I'm speaking from experience you can ask along the way like okay so now now what are we doing you know why well, like you and stuff but don't want a relationship cool it could come up again it doesn't matter how many times you try and reword it what they said is what they meant until they say otherwise and it's so confusing and i'm not gonna say it's not a little emotionally confusing and sometimes it can be emotionally manipulative but to avoid i think the whole point of this video is to help you put yourself first like to avoid the devastation that you will most likely feel take it as their word and to bring it back to point one don't play yourself if you know you can't get into a situation ship, friends with benefits whatever 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 don't do it like it's not the time to be like oh let me i mean it is the time but just try and prepare yourself for the pain that's gonna come because it's coming baby it's coming it's gonna be stirred up for months of quality time and months of this and the third and it's gonna go right across the face it's happened to me it was a nice little i was getting i was getting anxious like okay <laughs> what are we doing and it was it was a point of when well, you knew what this was oh and that it's it's literally a a knife to the stomach baby sim was crushed devastated i mean i wasn't i'm being dramatic i wasn't devastated but it it really was painful and even the like the inverse of that though because i've had an inverse experience where like Sometimes their actions just really exemplify, oh yeah, you like me, you like me. And even their words would do that. And then other times it would just be like, nothing. So it's like, confusion. And something that my mom always, always says, is if you're confused about how a guy feels about you, cut it. And I've seen that so recently, like social media, little posts, whatever, just like, 
confusion should not be involved as far as somebody liking you and you pursuing somebody like you just have to think about it that way like think about the guys in your dms that are just persistent you know they like you i'm not saying they have to be overbearing like that but there is no confusion about somebody liking you anytime that you have to be like mm, well sometimes i think he likes me mm, other times i think maybe not but then when i see him he's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. but then after that, I'm like, mm, like, who wants to deal with that? Why do you have to deal with that? When there is somebody that will make sure that you know consistently that they're feeling you. I just, I've seen it with my own eyes. Like, I, sometimes I'm just like, maybe I'm tweaking. Like, maybe that's the whole, don't get discouraged. Like, maybe I, this is, as, <laughs> this is what? Nowadays, this society, this is as good as it gets. No, 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 no. I've seen it with my own eyes. It gets better. You just are dealing with people that you shouldn't be dealing with. It sucks. Because it's like, dang, okay, well, who who else? I still haven't gotten this correct. There's somebody else. And when you get it, you're going to be like, oh, this is how I should have been treated this whole time. But that's the whole point of, like, this experience in college. Because it's like you have to go through it to know what not to do again come on you literally do and that brings me to my next point it's okay to get your feelings hurt it's all about lessons and growing don't stay down for too long like so many times i feel like people are like girl f him don't be crying over no blah 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 don't da -da -da -da, like you're too good like and that's true but i'm gonna be real honest which i have been and i will be because i feel like this will help somebody hopefully it is okay to cry let's let's be real i'm a cry baby and once i especially when i get mad like a lot of times the anger comes from being hurt so the tears will fall what i will say is you better save them for your pill i don't please Please, 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 save the tears for your pillow. Do not cry in front of that young man. Don't do it. Don't you. Don't you do it. Going back to the time where I was sitting in the room and the guy was like, well, I mean, you know what it, what this was. Ugh. I can literally envision myself sitting there like, and I felt it prick in the back of my eyes because I was just so like embarrassed. And I was just like, oh my God, like, I need to get out of here. And I just locked the f in and it was like don't you dare do not cry in front of this loser like please so i was like okay it was almost probably scary but you gotta do what you gotta do and i gathered my belongings and i think i think he was like oh like why are you getting up like it was it was kind of nuts it was kind of nuts honestly and i saved the tears for the pillow you cry at home you don't cry in front of him because two things are gonna happen either a if he's sick, he's going to use that to emotionally manipulate you. Or B, he's going to feel bad. Guys, in my experience, don't like to see girls cry. They don't like to see you cry. So they're either going to say something to make you stop crying, which is either not what they really want to say, not the truth, or say something, you know, like that you want to hear, which is basically what I just said. And it's, it's like, but that's not what you mean. You're just... Feel, you feel about that I'm crying so just sometimes you really have to suck it all in and go home to cry because your feelings are real like this stuff growing pains they're real it may suck and he may be a loser and he may not be worth your tears but if you let them out then they come out like what are you gonna do like just not cry about it like you have to feel the things that you're going through in order to know what did I oh my god I just heard a quote or somebody said it or I read it or somebody just said this quote about pain I, was it Taraji at our commencement somebody said something and it was like oh no, no no it was one of the commencement speakers and it was like you have to be vocal about your pain so that when so that you know when you've had enough or something like that and that doesn't mean that you necessarily need to sit up and be like so today this like you don't need to like do all that um but like journaling if you need to let it out in tears i've cried 
a bucket load of tears over certain situations and things that have happened that really were minuscule when I think about them now but they meant a big deal to me at the time so it's like when your feelings are hurt when you're like emotionally invested in something or you have these expectations and they're not met or something is said that's just hurtful or you see something you don't want to see like if you feel like you want to cry if your feelings are hurt about it own that own it please like you have to feel it because then you're able to set standards for later or you're able to set boundaries for yourself and for other people like a new rule that i have is i'm not going to your room or your apartment or whatever because I'm, I'm graduating now but i'm not going to your place of dwelling until we've at least had three dates and they it doesn't include your home because at that point it, it just sets a different standard and i've seen it time and time again like even if you're not giving the vibes that you're about to get down dirty like it doesn't even have to be that it just gives a different vibe you need to take me out at least three dates before we do any type of let me cook for you at my home let's watch a movie in my home because it's just like you need to date me i'm not doing the weird talking stage for 80 billion years link up stage for four months and then you get to a point where you're like okay yeah i'm talking eight other people ah. meanwhile you're not doing that because in your brain here we go back to that emotional attachment come on everything is linking up ladies because that's how it goes okay so my next point is something that my brother said to me recently like over this weekend if you don't have anything in common with the person it's most likely not gonna work and i really it seems once again so simple but when he said it to me i was like he was just like i really don't think that you pick guys that you have anything in common with and i'm like what do you mean so i i was really looking out the window like besides the fact that we both are basically maybe I dance and maybe they play sports or maybe I dance and he likes to dance occasionally or I'm in school and he's in school I really had to sit and think like you're right what do we have in common besides okay we can have a good conversation we both have a sense of humor okay those are some things but like what else can we connect with and I won't say that I've never picked a guy that I have anything in common with because there's no way I would have started to like them but really deeper common interests to really connect over i think that's important and i think sometimes i just obviously go off the attraction and other factors but like real things and an example of this that happened recently and this isn't like a, a really solid one because sometimes guys just be saying stuff to just make you feel good or just be like earn points but it kind of did earn him some points i wasn't really checking for him for real but this guy that I was sp speaking to was just like asking me questions about myself, things like that. And he was like, I saw that, I saw your book page or that you like to read or whatever. And at first I was embarrassed. Like I was just like, even though it's in my bio and it's very obvious that I like to read, no guy that I've talked to has pointed that out. Well, it's a newer thing, but just brought that up about me. And I was just like, oh like i was kind of embarrassed he was like no i think it's cool whatever despite if he thought it was cool or not I, it just reminds me of what my brother said and i was just like right well thank you i appreciate that a lot of times guys don't bring that up and i remember one time i was dating somebody that got upset with me actually because i wanted to read at night and like we had taken tons of trips together and done things like that and I, I won't really hold it against him, but I can't, I haven't really let it go because I was just like, it wasn't a time like he was like trying to talk to me, like we were in a deep conversation. It was like he was about to go to sleep. I was about to go to sleep. We had a long day. I wanted to unwind. He, I think he had the game on. Like, it was pretty like, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. And I opened up a book and he literally was like, why are you reading? Like, I was like, have you lost your mind? <laughs> are you serious? I can't read you act like I literally just put on a freaking cigar ash on the bed and then proceeded to smoke it and blow it in your face like it was literally like in a like it was like 
Really? Like you're me right now? Sir. Do you not have to get on TV? Are you not cuddled up about to go drive? I can read. And it just it just really was just like wow. This is something that genuinely calms me down at night, brings me joy. It take helps me to escape from whatever stresses I have. And then clearly you're the stressor going on in my life. You have a problem with it. That's weird. Okay, this one's a big one for me. Try not to take ghosting. I'm trying to lower my voice because it's like bedtime for real. Try not to take ghosting or failed talking stages, dating, whatever, too personally. Unless somebody explicitly said to you, I ghosted you because of this or I did this and that because of that. And it's a personal reflection of you. And sometimes even with that, you have to be careful because sometimes people deflect or just manipulate or gaslight. But try not to take it personally. And I think that's something that stops me from moving on quicker is because I just am like what happened especially when you think it's going well a lot of times what I learned this year in friendships and in, in team settings like in a lot of different relationships how people treat you is a reflection of how they feel about themselves or something that they have going on in their own lives so like if they have if they're lashing out or just treating you poorly and you know you didn't do anything wrong or you're giving your all and you're giving your best and it's great like i'm sure it's awesome and it's fantastic and you still get ghosted or they just stop talking to you or they just ghost you for a while and they come back or whatever it's a reflection of something that they have going on in their lives and it that i feel like that was my lesson of the year because like i said I, sometimes i take things so personally i'm just like i don't think that i i thought they really liked me and i thought that I treated this person as best as I could and they stood at this and it's not about you. A lot of times it is not about you and you need to be able to realize that and leave that person where they're at and accept it for what it was. And I feel like the quicker that you do that, the quicker that you're able to move on because you're not going back and, over, back and forth on details that like, okay, maybe I could have done this differently. Or maybe they didn't feel what I felt. They could have felt everything that you felt and still go to you. Or still treat you crazy because they're going through things themselves and they don't know how to articulate it. Or they're deflecting. Or they are just go want to go through it by themselves. And that's just not on you. And I just keep seeing different signs of that. And that lesson just keeps getting repeated or like shown to me in different ways and I feel like that is literally my lesson of the year and it's hard because even though in my brain I'm like this has nothing to do with me I should not take it personally I'm still like well why are they still why did they switch to somebody else or it does have something to do with me just because somebody decides to stop, stop talking to you and starts talking to somebody else doesn't mean that they got over whatever issues they had with you whatever issues were present and you're dealing with each other, it's probably still present in whoever they're about to deal with next. Because what time did they take to work on that and heal from it? Probably none. Especially if it went from you to them. Most likely none. So just try and take a deep breath and learn and grow. Like I, some situations are just gonna hurt for a while. <laughs> but just know that a lot of times it is not you sometimes it's you we're not perfect sometimes it is you but sometimes a lot of times it's not you if somebody like i said is not available emotionally that's not on you and if they ghost you because of it if they lack because of it that's not about you poor communication skills not about you being available, yeah, it's not about you. It's not about you, it's not about you, it's not about you, it's not about you, it's not about you. And this is literally me talking to myself, like, it's not about you. Let it go to the wind and just say, listen, that emotional attachment, what was it that I was so attached to? If they can't communicate, they're not emotionally available, if they're manipulated, whatever the case is, what was it that I was so attached to? Did I fluff it up? Did I expand it? Did I settle? Did I minimize? Did I? Like that, I think those are the things that you have to ask yourself because once you strip away, strip it down to the bare facts, 
a lot of times it wasn't giving what you deserved and it wasn't giving what you want anyways but once you take around take away the fluff and the romanticization is that a word what's left is kind of just like oh that wasn't that hot that wasn't what i wanted anyways and i'll and the advice that you would give to your friend, like what you would say to your friend is what you need to start saying to yourself. I have a friend that oftentimes she'll be like, no, nah, Simone, if this was me, what would you say? And I'm like, okay, you're right. Because if it was my friend, I'd be like, nah, girl, he hasn't even, he doesn't touch you back. Girl, you see him down here, girl, he doesn't take you on a date. Like it would be multiple things like, girl, he said this and they did that. Like. It's so easy to do for other people. Start doing it for yourself. Whole time it was clown town. Okay, we're almost done. Assuming things versus just straight up asking. This can be dangerous. This can be not so fun. But I think assuming is something that I do. I overthink. Going back to communication, I need a great communicator because I will think my way into a solution immediately. Especially if I see something. If I, it's just, it's just too easy to do or there's no communication. Then I'm like, okay, well that means that you hate me and you never liked me and well, now you're in love with somebody else. Is that drastic? Yes. But sometimes if you just ask. Now, will people lie? Yes. But at least you ask. I just think that the more that you assume, it can put you in some situations that could have been avoided. This has happened to me multiple times. But the more that you, like, it's just like, at the same time, the more that you assume, the more painful it is for you. Like, just don't even take it there. Like, why take it to the worst possible scenario? Because now, now you're crying and listening to Adele. And you have no reason to be like, if somebody can't be straightforward with you, again, that's not somebody that you want to be around. If you have the nerve, if you decided that you want to talk to multiple people, or if you decided that you're no longer interested in me, or whatever the case is, you need to be able to stand on that. And that's what a man or woman does, somebody that is mature. Just be grown about what you're doing. If you're grown enough to do these things, or you're grown enough to decide this, or make this decision, and you know that we have some type of thing going on, you should be grown enough to tell me. It's, it's truly as simple as that. And if you can't, boop, another reason to get Switch these young men out, as Summer would say. Easier said than done. I don't be switching them out fast enough. Okay, this one's quick to the point. Wrap it up. Be safe. Come on. Put yourself first. That's my the whole lesson of this video. Put yourself first. A lot of times, as women, we do not put ourselves first. We think about, oh, I can give this person this. I just know that they can become this or. They may need me in this way. A lot of times it's just like, you're giving and giving and giving and giving and nothing is being poured back. And what will you have left for yourself? Or even worse, when they run off with everything that you poured and give it to somebody else. And once again, you have nothing. And then you're also dealing with the pain of pouring into a cup that they gave, that they're now pouring elsewhere been there done that something that is because you're not putting yourself first and now when you when you get to a place where you meet somebody and it's just like they deserve compromise and you can trust them to lead and sometimes you lead and follow like it's a whole equally yoked type thing that's probably way later in the game we're in college let's be real so at this stage you really need to be putting yourself first but in a respectful way that doesn't mean that you dog people and you're not honest and you're trashy it just means that you're looking out for you so back to my point you don't know what these people are doing people can be very trifling they can lie go get tested together make it a date first date let's get tested together especially if you want to be into with somebody because <sighs> it's a way these young men be lying and these young ladies People don't take care of themselves and they don't care to. And some people know that they have stuff and they still get down like that. So you look out for you. 
and we're running to get tested together not you show me something people can beg things like let's be real you need to see with your own eyes at the doctor's office at Planned Parenthood at the clinic HU clinic run me those results baby and you can see mine and then y'all do what y'all gotta do and the last one this is the faith believer this is the the lover girl in me if it's meant to be it really will be if it is meant to be it will be if it was if it's meant i like i am a firm believer that it'll happen even if that means that it doesn't happen right now and happens two years later if it if that person is meant for you you'll have them especially if you're let's take the church if you're following god if you're listening to what god is saying and you're really really trying to follow that path and be open and be honest and be vulnerable like all of these things that can sometimes get you hurt i think are worth it in the end because not only are you growing as a person i think you'll be brought what you attract what you put out you can't do that with everyone you can't just immediately be open honest and vulnerable but you have to be true to yourself moral of the story moral of the video put yourself first and be true to yourself at the end of the day if somebody isn't appreciating all that you have and all that you're giving and all that you are they're not the right one if you have to compromise if you have to minimize if you have to settle if you have to dial back if you have to oh my god shrink yourself that's not the person even if you don't i don't want to marry them i don't take them that serious you shouldn't even be giving them the time of day like not even an ounce of your energy because they're sucking up grapes and they have nothing to give back to you. A couple laughs, uh huh, great. He's a clown. You can go to the circus to get laughs. Let's be real, you can vlog it to YouTube to get laughs from cute guys. I'm going to TikTok. Because the more intimacy and the more emotional connections that are made, the harder it is. So that was a lot. That was a lot. But I'm very passionate about the subject and if you have any questions, comments, and concerns, let me know. Honestly, we're going to continue to learn and grow. I may make the same mistakes again until I get it. I feel like you get lessons over and over and over until you get it. It's painful, but once you get it, I feel like the lesson stops. Like, not the lesson stops, but you stop getting tested. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And... I'll see you guys next time. Good luck, lovelies. Love yourself. Put yourself first.